Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to a presentation on property tax appeals involving New Jersey golf courses. My name is Frank Ferrugia. I'm a partner at the law firm of McCarter and English, and I've been asked by the New Jersey Golf Association to make a presentation with respect to achieving property tax reductions for golf course properties in New Jersey. Um, I've had the pleasure and the privilege of speaking live before the Golf Association, and I wish we were doing that again this year, but obviously uh, the situation uh, in our state and in our nation uh, mandates that we uh, do this presentation uh, virtually. And uh, I encourage uh, those of you who have taken the time to tune into this presentation uh, to um, uh, reach out to me if you have any questions. And we'll be glad to address any of those questions or issues that you might have. Um, very briefly, before I start the PowerPoint slides, um, what we do in a property tax appeal is that we challenge the assessed value that is placed on a property by the local assessor. Uh, we will, uh, our property tax appeal group, uh, which I head up, uh, will evaluate a property to determine whether it is a good appeal before we file an appeal. And uh, that evaluation is something that we do as part of our due diligence to advise the client as to whether an appeal is appropriate. If it is appropriate, we typically handle these appeals on a contingency fee basis, uh, although hourly fee arrangements may be available as well. Most clients like the contingency fee arrangement because if we don't get a reduction, we don't get a fee. Um, the experts that we sometimes use in support of these appeals include uh, an appraiser, and we may also need a golf course cost expert, which I'll get into greater detail as I make this presentation. Um, one of the things you should remember from this presentation, uh, if you forget everything else, is that the deadline for filing appeals in the New Jersey tax court is April 1. And appeals that are filed uh, or, or come to our attention beyond April 1 are out of time for that particular tax year. So uh, for 2021, uh, uh, we are, as of the date of me making this presentation, we are past the April 1 deadline. So. Uh, anyone considering a potential appeal on a golf course property uh, into the New Jersey tax court uh, should be looking at 2022 uh, as a potential appeal. It is never too early uh, to start looking into whether an appeal is appropriate, because again, we do uh, an elaborate due diligence process, and you'll hear more about that in uh, the rest of the presentation. Um, we have filed and successfully resolved a number of appeals on golf course properties in New Jersey. <clears throat> and on this particular slide, you see uh, a representative sample of the golf courses that we have uh, done appeals for and represented. And the measure of the reduction uh, in assessment uh, that we have been able to achieve for these particular courses. Um, all of these um, have resulted in uh, cash refunds back to the golf course, uh, some in the amount of millions of dollars. When is value determined as of? In New Jersey, value is determined as of October 1 of the pre-tax year. So if we were looking at an appeal for 2022, we would be asking the question, what was the value of the property on October 1, 
2021, October 1 of the pre-tax year. So typically the data that is relevant for this type of analysis is data that uh, is from around the October 1 date. And we typically want to look at pre-valuation date evidence. Post-valuation date evidence sometimes is frowned upon by the New Jersey tax court. Um, and there are a number of cases there on the slide that indicates uh, what's relevant and what's not relevant to determining value as of, as of October 1. The reason why we pick a single valuation date like October 1 of the pre-tax year is because of uniformity. We want everyone having their value determined as of a single date. That doesn't mean that you have to find comparable sales or other data exactly on October 1. It can be around October 1, but that is the date of valuation that the New Jersey legislature has specified in NJSA 54 colon 4-38.1 for determining value for purposes of a tax appeal. Um, every property will receive a property uh, 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 tax assessment notice. And typically prior to February 1, that assessment notice is sent to the property owner. Here on this particular slide, we have a sample of what the property record card looks like. Uh, you will notice that this one, this particular example is actually for 2015. And you'll notice that the property record card will have what the assessment was for 2014 as well, so that you can compare how your assessment may have changed from one year to the next. This is usually a postcard size green card. And that's what you should look for in uh, around February 1 uh, to be put on notice as to what the town is assessing your property at. Um, it is that assessment for the given year uh, that we challenge uh, in a tax appeal. As I mentioned earlier, April 1 is the filing deadline uh, in a particular year, or 45 days from the date that the notice of assessment was mailed, whichever is later. So if your town is late, and sending out those green cards, um, the deadline would be adjusted to reflect the 45 day period after the green cards were sent out. But I always advise our clients, don't uh, assume that the green cards went out on a given date. Remember the April 1 deadline. That is the critical date upon which all decisions should be made. And if it turns out that the green cards were sent out later and we have a, a little extra time, so be it. Uh, but don't risk that by uh, uh, missing the April 1 deadline. And by the way, it must be filed by April 1. Uh, putting a tax appeal in the mail and postmarking it April 1 is not good enough. It must be received by the tax court uh, by April 1. Now, another exception is if your town is doing a revaluation or a municipal wide reassessment. If everyone is town in town is the subject of a revaluation uh, 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 program, then the tax appeal deadline is actually May 1. So uh, you'll know if your town is doing a revaluation because typically your property will be inspected, you'll be visited by the assessor but once again, I caution, uh, don't be under any misunderstanding that there is a revaluation or there isn't a revaluation. Sometimes towns announce they're going to do a revaluation and they delay that revaluation. They postpone it to a subsequent year. That has happened in a particular town for one of the golf courses that was on that list uh, that I showed you. The revaluation should have taken place at least a year or two ago and it is continually being delayed by the municipality. Assume that April 1 is your deadline. <clears throat> if you are a property in Monmouth County, 
there is a pilot program underway for filing before the county tax board. There are two places you can file in New Jersey, county tax board, or if your assessment is greater than a million dollars, you can go directly to the New Jersey tax court. Typically for a golf course property, your assessment is going to be in excess of a million dollars. So the April 1 deadline would apply for a tax court appeal. If your property happened to be less than a million dollars in assessment, you would have to go to the county board for an appeal. And the county board deadline generally is April 1, except in Monmouth County, where they have set a deadline of January 15th. So be aware of these exceptions, but when you leave this webinar, have April 1 uh, as a deadline in your mind. That's the key. Now, the assessments in New Jersey are subject to what we call a chapter 123 ratio. Not all towns are assessed at 100% of fair market value. If you had a property that was worth a million dollars and a town was doing a revaluation, you would be assessed at 100% of fair market value. A, town, a, a property worth a million dollars should be assessed at a million dollars. Not all towns are at that 100% ratio. Every town has a different ratio. In Newark, for example, the ratio hovers around 80%. There may be towns where the ratio is at 50%. The state calculates those ratios based on looking at market data in that town. And the state then publishes a list of ratios that tells us in a particular town, assessments as a percentage of market value are running at an average of X percent. Why does the state publish that? Because if you're in a town where the average ratio of assessed value to market value is 50%, let's say, you have a constitutional right to be assessed at the same standard of value. It's called the uniformity clause in our constitution. So whatever the ratio is in your particular town, you have a constitutional right to be assessed at the same percentage of value as published by the state in the chapter 123 ratios. Now you see on this slide, something referenced as the 15% corridor. What that means is that whatever that average ratio is, the town can be off by 15% above or 15% below. That's called the corridor. The courts have ruled that an assessor doesn't have to be exactly on the average ratio for you. They can be off by a margin of error of 15% in either direction. Now, one of the things that we always advise our clients to be aware of is that sometimes towns send out something called a chapter 91 income and expense information form. If you are an income producing property, you must answer these income and expense information requests within 45 days of receiving the request. If you do not, failure to answer that chapter 91 will bar you from filing an appeal in the subsequent year. Um, this is something that's critical to be mindful of if your uh, property receives such a chapter 91 request. Now, how do we prove our case? How do we establish uh, whether or not your property is overassessed? We typically in golf courses use a cost approach. We do not typically use uh, a sale approach or an income approach. And we'll talk a little bit more about what kind of proofs you use in those various approaches. But we will typically use a cost approach in a golf course. How do we do that? We use experts to tell us what it would cost to reproduce 
what is there at the golf course in terms of its improvements, uh, what it would cost to reproduce the clubhouse, what it would cost to reproduce the greens, the tee boxes, the sand bunkers, the fairways, the sprinkler system, things of, of that sort. But then the land itself, we use a sale approach to determine the value of the land. So we will look for comparable sales of similarly zoned land property. We will determine what the zoning is. Typically for a golf course, the zoning is in the nature of recreation or conservation. So we will wanna find similarly zoned uh, property to determine what the value of the land is. We add that to the value of the improvements, which we've determined by the cost approach, and that gives us our total value. We compare that to the assessment, and that tells us whether you are overassessed or not. How do we get land sales? How do we look at comparable sales? We confer with appraisers. We confer with brokers. There are people that we work with regularly in this field that have that kind of information. How do we determine the cost uh, of doing a cost approach for the improvements? Again, there are a circle of uh, experts in this field that we typically uh, uh, work with and that we will avail ourselves of in order to determine those numbers. If there are environmental issues, we might consult with an environmental consultant. Uh, but cost experts, certainly, and appraisers and or real estate brokers to get comparable sales for the land. The valuation methodologies, as I mentioned, are three approaches, the income approach, the sale approach, and the cost approach. The income approach, as you might guess, is what is the value of my property based on the cash flow that this property can throw off? This is for properties that are typically rented, office buildings, industrial properties. Golf courses typically don't rent out their facilities uh, for use as a golf course. Um, the fact that someone is paying an initiation fee or paying their dues, uh, that's for membership in the golf course. That's not typically the kind of uh, rent that we think of when we use an income approach. So typically an income approach is not what we use in the New Jersey tax court. The sale approach is what is my property worth based on comparable sales of the property. Now, while we may use a sale approach for the land value, we typically don't use a sale approach for the overall value of the golf course. Why is that? When you look at sales of golf clubs, those sales involve much more than just the real estate. They may involve personal property. They may involve furniture, fixtures, and equipment. Uh, they may involve membership lists when you uh, sell a particular uh, golf club. And that doesn't really give us the segregated real estate value that we're looking for. So we'll use a sale approach to determine value of the land. We don't typically use a sale approach to determine the overall value. The cost approach is really the approach that the New Jersey tax court has endorsed as the appropriate methodology for valuing uh, a golf club. As I mentioned previously with a cost approach, you uh, cost out the improvements, you subtract whatever depreciation has occurred, and there are methodologies for determining accrued depreciation. And then you value the land component by using a uh, sale approach. Typically, when we come in and do our due diligence and we evaluate whether your golf course is an appropriate uh, candidate for a tax appeal, we will ask for certain information. We'll want to see your notice of assessment and your tax bill. We're going to want to see a list of your most recent capital expenditures. We'll want to know what the square footage is of your clubhouse. We will want to look at an income and expense statement for whatever value that will have. 
And finally, we will ask if you've had any prior appraisals uh, that have been done recently. That might give us some key information uh, as well. Here are some of the cases that I have referenced uh, that uh, tell us how the New Jersey tax court is going to uh, value the property. One is a case that was decided in 2011 involving the Bear Brook Golf Course, which was a semi-private semi club. The court there said, golf courses are usually considered special purpose properties. They are not so regularly sold or exchanged in the marketplace as most other properties. Traditionally, the cost approach has been accorded great weight in the valuation of a golf course because they are considered special purpose property that were not frequently exchanged in the market. The Forest Hill Club in Belleville was also the subject of a decision by the tax court. And there, the court, uh, similar to the Bear Brook case, uh, made uh, similar findings with respect to the use, uh, the use of the cost approach. Here were some of the conclusions of that course of uh, that court. The difference in operation between a not-for-profit golf facility, such as the subject property, and one operated on a daily fee for profit basis is significant. Analysis of the operations of nonprofit uh, private golf clubs owned and operated solely to benefit members differs from the analysis of prof profit making private, semi private, or public courses owned by individual investors, hotels, or motels. Furthermore, the method of operation of such facilities may impact the appropriate method of valuation. While the income capitalization approach may be appropriate in valuing daily fee facilities due to their income producing potential, it has been held that private nonprofit and municipal courses usually do not generate sufficient income for return on investment, and therefore the application of the income approach to value is often precluded. Plaintiff's expert failed to provide the court with reliable market data supporting the conclusion that the actual income at the subject property was equal to economic rent. And by the way, economic rent is another term for market rent. As a result, this court was without any basis to evaluate his opinion. So Forest Hill is a case where the court could not conclude a value, did not conclude a value, because the expert used an income approach, and the court said that the income approach was simply not probative of value, leading us again to the conclusion that uh, a cost approach is the appropriate way to do this. In summary, the valuation of golf courses in New Jersey is something that every owner, developer, investor of a golf course should consider as ripe for evaluation. It's something that everyone should do, if not on an annual basis, at least every couple of years. Um, assessors, uh, as much as they operate in good faith, are known to make mistakes. And market value uh, of these properties does in fact change and fluctuate over time. So it pays to do an evaluation to determine whether or not uh, an appeal should be uh, filed. We at McCarter and English, and given our relationship with the Golf Association, are prepared to do an evaluation of any of your member golf courses for no fee. We will do the evaluation free of charge. And as I said earlier, if the appeal is in fact warranted, we will handle the case on a contingency fee basis, which again means that we will only be paid if we are able to achieve uh, a reduction. Um, the deadline is April 1. We typically use a cost approach. We will ask you for some of that information that I referenced in order to do uh, the evaluation. And you know from looking at the list of cases that we have handled, uh, that there are savings to be achieved uh, with golf course properties. 
I want to thank everyone at the association for giving us the opportunity to make this presentation. And I really would encourage uh, any of your members, if you have any questions as a result of seeing this presentation, uh, to contact us. Uh, and we would be glad uh, to answer any of your questions uh, that you may have with respect to uh, property tax appeals on golf course properties. Thank you very much. And uh, my best wishes to all of you to stay well and stay safe.